Welcome, thanks for joining me. Hopefully this video is coming out the 20th of July. We're talking about end of July through August 2022. Now this is a significant period. There is much change, transformation, digestion, especially in July, taking place beneath the surface. July began with a Cancer new moon, leading us into emotional digestion, reflection on the past. We're reconnecting with our biological families, our soul families. Venus is in the sign of Cancer from the 17th of July through August 11th. And this is such a time where we're seeking the safety in connection and to receive the feedback through the mirror of relationship that allows us to open our heart to the inner world of sentiment. Cancer is the most important missing medicine in our day and age. The necessary safety, support, and security to feel into our inner truth and story. This is a period of remembering who we are. Now these days we see the Sun and Mercury join asteroid Ceres at the last degree of Cancer and opposite to Pluto. And here is a significant turning point where we're going through grist in the mill, rounding a corner of transformation, intensity, and we're seeking what is the purpose of our experience. Well, so much of the purpose of our life is evolution is transformation and so we're really looking at how are we transforming growing at this time what do we need who do we need support from there are changes to how we are relating to ourselves how we're relating to others and when we shine a spotlight on the asteroid series this will very much bring to light the theme of care how are we taking care of ourselves versus how are we taking care of others? Do we have the nourishment and the nurturance that we need? A little later in this video, when I start to talk about this new moon in Leo, this is an exciting, pronounced, revolutionary turning point. And this turning point, I suspect, will be very warmly welcomed especially by those of us who may be going through periods of intensity, change, transformation, tumultuousness. You know what we all need to learn how to do? This cancer most missing and needed medicine is learning how to grieve, to mourn, which is effectively how to let go and no longer carry on our shoulders the tragedies, the stories, the experiences of the past. We have to learn how to grieve, mourn, and have the safe space, the support of people to do so. This is the work of this time, and it's challenging work. As I mentioned in the last video, I hope everyone highlights the Cancer Capricorn polarity, the month of July, the month of January. This strikes a collective chord. People tend to get very sick as we're caught in the conflict between the needs for physical security, the work we're putting into our job, versus the needs that we have for this deeper emotional digestion and processing. This is the work of our species. This is why I'm passionate about these videos, and yet we all have our experiences and our challenges. I'm gonna talk about Chiron in a moment, but believe it or not, this isn't the third attempt I'm trying to record this video. This is the third day in a row. It's almost as if the universe has thrown everything at me, preventing this message from getting out there. Point being, we all have our individual caught between a rock and a hard space. And this is such a period of time. Yesterday, July 19th, Chiron, the wounded healer, stationed at 16 degrees Aries. Chiron, the wounded healer, or I should say the wounded healer archetype was coined by the psychotherapist Carl Jung to describe the phenomena where healers are just driven to take care of their clients, those in need, via their own experience of suffering, brokenness. 
Chiron is the reality, not the idea, the reality that the most powerful healers and healings discover their medicines, skills, and tools through the crisis of healing. It is our healing crisis that births and initiates us into the medicine to become healers ourselves. And we could all use a little bit more support these days. By the way, this is some of the intentions behind my community. We're going to have two free community meetings at the end of this month, the 30th, the 31st. There's a Pluto group for those that are interested in evolutionary astrology. There's also a free community meeting where we simply practice holding space, listening to each other's needs, and how can we show up and support each other in each other's lives, as every community should provide this type of support. This coming weekend, I'm going to have my next monthly Q&A where you can also bring in your birth chart, a specific question, and I provide a five to ten minute mini reading as a group. So anyways, we all need a little bit more support these days. And as much as we can provide support for others, there's going to be some golden opportunities to do so right now. There is a very interesting study done by the astrologer Martin Lass. He's actually first and foremost a violin concertoist, amazing musician, as are most natural astrologers. But his book on Chiron is amazing. And there's a study at the very end of the book where Chiron has a highly elliptical orbit. And so when Chiron's closer to the Earth, moves much faster through the zodiac signs. And what Martin Last discovered is when there are more Chiron transits, there is an increase of the collective experience of crisis. And in such collectively heightened experiences of crisis, there is an increase of compassionate behavior by our entire species. This is something that becomes objectively clear if you travel around the world. If you see how apathetic people are in comfortable, rich places and the amount of care, concern, and providing that oftentimes the most starving people provide to others. This is Chiron wisdom. This is the truth of coming into this heart medicine. Anyways, Chiron stationing mid-July can be a turning point in our healing journey, which is often brought about through an experience of a healing crisis. Yeah, Chiron and Aries can much like be the experience of getting punched in the gut. You know, it's me doing this video three times in a row and it's, you know, it's just like the energy, the purpose, the momentum. Does this even really matter? How am I going to feel excited about this? You know, punch to the gut. It can also be reactivity. All of a sudden, a million degrees, a ton of energy, like an atom bomb going off in our stomachs and, and fighting and reactivity. And the point here is there's a wound that's getting triggered. And the healing endeavor is in the restoration of confidence to be ourselves, the energy and vitality to be strong in our bodies, in our sexuality, in our individuality. So that way we can lead, initiate, go to the beat of our own drum. Boy, when we talk about this new moon, this is a powerful birthing of such autonomy, individuality, confidence to be our own brilliant, unique, individual pioneer. So this is part of the healing journey to trust our instincts, to have the confidence to go our own way. And this can play out in many different ways in many different people's lives. This can, again, bring up health crises like we're dealing with things in our own body or, or sexual challenges. It can also be a healing of autonomy, independence, and confidence through healing from past patterns of codependency. And here, Chiron through Aries, this whole decade-long period is going to initiate many souls through the rite of passage of necessary separation necessary distance. Heck, that's a huge part of the medicine of these overall times. There's a very powerful signature at the time of the new moon between Jupiter stationing, Mars joining Uranus on the moon's north node. 
while this new moon in Leo activates this new energy and direction. And you know what? One of the major keys of this time period, bottom line, is the need for sovereignty, the need for spaciousness. Every single body has their own rhythm, has their own diet, routine, way of relating and functioning with others. Every single human has got a whole slew of sensitivities which are going to be unique and different for the sensitivities of others. How we are giving, spending, trading, energy, resources, time will be fundamentally different per each and every individual. But that is exactly what we need to explore, what we need to experiment, where we need to pioneer. So to honor and break in a new way of doing things. That's going to be the wave passing our world end of July through August. There's a new way of doing things. And there's going to be lots of fast triggers like a domino effect. One rug getting ripped under our feet, catalyzing the next change in a sequence of chemical reactions. Mars Uranus on the moon's north node at the end of July. This is going to kick start a whole revolutionary period where it's the global economy, agricultural situation, nations, trade, the amount of decimal points and digits in our bank account. It's about to all change. And the very worst thing we could do is be clinging on to the past, the old ways of doing things, the old ways of evaluating worth, self-worth, value, resources. All of this is going through a divine reinvention. And it is the opportunity to reinvent. It's the time to take whatever you've had on the back burner, been waiting to introduce or share. It's go time. It's the time to do it differently, and it can really pay off. It's going to be like gambling. Big wins, big losses, but there's an overall theme of excitement that we can embrace. This is the time to use the magic of changing anxiety. We don't know what's going to happen into the excitement of discovery. We get to be the ones to discover what's going to happen. Now I'm getting a little ahead of myself. This video is coming out in the midst of Chiron stationing. Again, health crises, relationship crises, the feelings of intensity. This is an alarm bell resounding in our collective and it feels intense. It doesn't feel safe. Something's got to change. As I mentioned, Ceres with the Sun, Mercury, opposite to Pluto. That brings up the Ceres, Persephone, Pluto, mythology, but it's a reality. All of these myths are about reality and understanding reality for what it is. So the Illusion Mysteries were the Greek-Roman rite of passage, highly occult, that was the initiation into the wisdom of nature. Ceres. You know, the word cereal comes from the goddess Ceres, the goddess of grain, the goddess of the earth, nourishment, nurturance. She is like the Mother Earth figure. Her daughter Persephone is abducted by Pluto, Lord of the Underworld. Ceres grieves, mourns, laments the loss of her daughter, causing an endless winter time on planet Earth. Ceres, the mother of seasons until Jupiter arranges for Persephone to be brought up to join her mother for half of the year and then join her husband Pluto for the other half of the year. And this is said to be a symbol for the sine wave, which is the reverberation of the seasons, the zodiac, which is the divine dance of all life on planet Earth itself. There is such a powerful wisdom in death, letting go, and regeneration. And Ceres is a very lunar, maternal, like asteroid that has so much to do with safety, nourishment, and support. So to grieve and let go of this loss, which breathes back in the life, the light of life, the space of life, the energy of life. That's what's going to be returning to us especially if we're doing the work of moving through. I mean, all the difference in the world. This is called a Rasalila healing channel. My orientation is towards healing. 
right? It's not the same as sports or entertainment. There's a goal. We want to be moving forward. We want to be improving. We want to be coming out of the hell realms of the past. And you know what? That work and path is for those who are confronting their emotions, other emotions, the discomfort that's going on beneath the surface, the unspoken truths. This is the divine feminine that's still so wildly oppressed. And the avoidant type of person that's going to run into sparkly philosophies, I'm always happy all the time, we avoid the past, we avoid negative emotions, we avoid talking about uncomfortable uh, stuff, there is no healing. There's no possibility for healing. So this is about learning how to transform our inner reality, to let go of this old gunk that's simply coming up to be spat out. It's a divine regurgitation, a purge, a vomiting of all that we need to get rid of first to clear the space for the new light of day that wants to come in, beginning on this Leo new moon. It's fresh, it's exciting, it's revitalizing, it's reinventing us on the molecular level. Chiron is like being on the operation table. Chiron is the experience when we go to a cheap restaurant and get food poisoning, and then we spend that whole evening purging those toxins into the toilet. That's the Chiron effect. That's what Chirons do. That's what healers do. They hold your hair while you're puking, and they want to do that because it feels really good to be of service of this movement to our species. But while we're going through the Chiron experience, I am not telling anyone, oh, keep your chin up, positivity, sparkles, rainbows. No, it's not necessary to feel that way, to think that way. Again, this is actually the bullshit that leads people away from the divine feminine, away from healing and its pretend association. And then sometimes those disassociated people judge and put down the people who are doing the good work, which means getting your hands a little messy. In ourselves, we're doing this. We're the doctor on the operation table to ourselves, and certainly we can offer this back to others. The more skilled and the more we do this in ourselves, the more capable we are of offering these medicines to others. But no, it's like everything that's in the way of our confidence, our clear energy, our strength, our embodiment, our autonomy. Again, this is birthing leaders, birthing warriors, the initiation is necessary separation. The initiation is having to prove to ourselves that we can do what we want to do. This is also about freedom. Freedom doesn't have to be a prison lifetime. Well, Chiron's going to purge all the fears, all the inadequacies, all the disappointments, all the past experiences, all the he said, she said. It's exiting all the pores of our system especially mid-July. But July, this Cancer, Capricorn, Ceres, opposite to Pluto, it is a wringing out of the old mop. My recent video on Lilith was all about the feminine principle of Lilith, which is really the same as Venus and Nana, the principle of death, rebirth, and regeneration, one of the most missing and missing, uh, misunderstood truths that's a part of our makeup, just like the moon. Yes, we have emotions, and our emotions and what we're feeling is actually why we're alive. The emotions and feeling and processing is the actual spiritual alchemic, al alchemy that changes who we are. Because all of this processing, digesting, and vomiting, which again requires the safe space and the safe support, and what we're all discovering in times like these is who our real friends and supportive people are because it is not everybody. It's actually the minority of people that are doing this good work because it's scary, you know? We need the support to go in, vomit it out, etc. So this is why we're alive. This is what allows us to be in tune with the experience of life itself is through feeling. And again, any crisis where we're not feeling is to bring us back into deeper feeling so we can come back to the feeling of being alive. First, we gotta, you know, dump the vacuum cleaner, all of this stuff out, and then it's going to start operating the way that it should. We'll be cleared out the way that we should feel. This is where this processing, digestion, and reflection can also catalyze a fundamental change 
of how we identify and relate to ourselves. This is a time where our self-image is changing and transforming through these necessary prods, triggers, need to digest, look at who we are, and is this who I really am? Is this really what I value? Was this a projection coming from the past that I was like a sponge to and then I identified as this? This whole processing period of July is going to lead into this focusing upon what is mine versus what is theirs. And here's where there's a very distinct signature on the day of the new moon, July 28th. We have a new moon joined with Ceres, trying to Jupiter, who's stationing retrograde in Aries on the day of the new moon. And Jupiter in Aries is ruled by Mars, conjunct Uranus on the moon's north node. Very distinct signature. So first of all, Jupiter stationing retrograde in Aries on the day of this new moon brings the question for all of us, what's my truth? What's my truth? What's my path? What is my individual nature? What do I want to do? What gives me a spark to live? That's what we're all going to be discovering. It's not going to come ser served on a silver platter. We got to Marie Kondo all these possibilities. Hold it up to your heart. If the spark is there, that's your truth. If you hold it up to your heart and nothing's there, set it down. This is the time to experiment, to discover what's bringing the vitality, the excitement to live our life back to ourselves. What's our truth? This is about the desire to know and understand. It's not about having all knowledge and understanding. See, Aries is the daringness to experience and through the experience, we learn, grow, and transform. Aries is climbing mountains. Aries is jumping out of planes. Aries is not asking, what do you think about this? Should I do this? Is this going to really work out in the world? Because guess what? When we ask those questions, we hear a little bit of everything from everybody, don't we? And again, when we go through these emotional crisis types of periods, we know who's really supportive and who's not really supportive. And we hear about who's listening to us and who's just throwing at us their impressions and their truth. Everyone's got their idea of who I should be, what I should do, what would be healthiest for me. What's mine? What's my truth? Mercury squares the moon's nodes on the same day, the new moon. This brings up the phenomenon of psychic entropy. Now we're hearing other voices in our heads and we're having to discern which is my voice versus the voice of my sibling or my ex or my mother or father or my last boss. All of their expectations, reflections, standards, projections that really had nothing to do with me or who I am. Now this is going to birth new interests, new directions. It's a time to find out for myself. Again, the need is for sovereignty, but there's also a need for discernment with this Mercury square of the notes. What is most exciting to us? There's going to be a self-discovering process that's here. And you know what's funny is what could have been so exciting just a month or two ago, you know, May, June, wow, this new reality. I get to do all these new things. It's so liberating. And now we're just like, do I even really want to do that? Is that really still exciting for me? The key with Jupiter retrograde is the unwillingness to assume, the unwillingness to know. No, it's about the desire to explore the desire to discover. And that's where the month of August can be remarkably revolutionary. This is about liberation. Mars, Uranus on the moon's north node. Leo is about the authentic releasing of our individual truth, of our purpose, of our self-expression. That's what we get to sow a seed for under this new moon. And I encourage all of you to do this. Those of you who are watching these videos, you're working with astrology, you are the creatives, artists, inventors, pioneers of the coming age. 
this new moon, do your magic, whatever it may be, to sow a seed intention that will unfold through August into a newfound level of liberation, creativity, and the excitement to share. You know, Leo gets put down as being all narcissistic. We have to embrace Leo in a healthy, balanced way, which is the confidence. It's the sense of being full. It's the sense of being alive. All the fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sag, are like this. It's the experience of being alive, which gives this fundamental vitality, breathes life back into our bones and our blood. So Leo is the specialness of being born alive. You are a divine child of God. You were born with the talents and the traits that you were made to celebrate, that you were made to share. Leo, like the sun, simply releases and radiates outwardly its own sexual creative energy. Leo is the individual we were born to be, going to the beat of our own drum. It doesn't have to be the same as anyone else. We don't have to be understood by anybody else. To be alive, to be confident, to radiate our own love, our own heart. Ceres joining this new moon is this maternal, nourishing, nurturing, caring warmth that is radiated through being playful and being silly and being special and being seen and being on center stage and take it from me, have it, have this warmth, have this beauty. It does come from my offering of myself as an individual. Now, that's the warmth that we get to bring back to ourselves as we're ringing out, as we're doing the moon, as we're crying and reflecting and remembering and going back to our families and creating new family because we need family to remember who we actually are, to have the accurate reflection of our identity back to ourselves, to hear our emotions reflected back to ourselves, to have the support we're not alone in that But there will be what will likely be a welcomed energy shift at the end of this month. Going into August, we're taking all this digestion and we're birthing something new. It feels fresh. It feels alive. And we're going from introversion to extroversion. And behind the scenes, talking about to on the stage, show and tell. That's what we get to excitedly discover. Uranus is going to station on the moon's north node in August. Mars joins north node Uranus August 1st to 2nd. And then Uranus is going to retrograde, stay with the moon's nodes through the end of the year. Again, there's a global economic agricultural rug getting ripped under from under our feet. But you know what? The fundamental people, skills, and resources are all here. We have what we need. We have to keep ourselves looking at that light at the end of the tunnel. Because boy, when people's money gets affected, it feels scary here on planet Earth. We have what we need. It's like gambling. Big wins, big losses. But this is an extremely innovative, revolutionary, reactive, unpredictable time. There's a need to break in the new through action. Mars, Uranus on the North Node, it's time to act. This could be very spontaneous and instinctual, but it is to take the lid off, to take the cork off, because something new is coming free, coming loose, being shaken loose very well, maybe. Again, Taurus, Mars, Uranus, and Taurus on the moon's north node in Taurus. This is about empowerment through sovereignty, taking the reins, cutting the cord where necessary, reinventing the wheel. What is our lifestyle? Now, wisdom of Taurus is it can be made easier through less is more. Simplicity, minimalization, people quitting their super soul-killing nine-to-five desk jobs, taking that last little bit of money, buying the van on top of the hill and digging a well. And we watch the sunrise and the sunset, and we grow our corn and we trade with our neighbor who has a cow. This is going to be the liberation in some way, shape, or form. It's Taurus wisdom. Less is more. Simplicity, sovereignty, closed circuit containers. 
we have what we need, self-resourcefulness. Again, any skills, talents that have been on the back burner, those may be the things that you were born and made to do. Leo New Moon. And those things may pay the bills infinitely easier than what the bills were paid for before. Maybe it's paying a little bit less, but if it feels and seems less like work, it's going to be infinitely easier. All of those creative cogs and wheels are going to start spinning. Stuff's going to start getting produced. It doesn't have to be a prison reality. It's a little bumpy right now, but that's where this rocket ship wants to go. And again, the wisdom of Taurus is like an empty barn with a barrel of oats there in the corner. That's all I need. I got my oats. I got my barn. What more could I need? The sounds of the birds keep me alive. There's this wisdom of simplicity, minimalization, but this transformation going through that window of less is more. We come out in a totally new reality. And what we're liberating is our style. Our lifestyle. How do you want to live? How do you want to wake up and go to sleep? How often are you working? How often are you eating your mil meals? It's basic, it's simple, and it's the most revolutionary stuff on the planet. This also has so much to do with reinventing the wheel through reinventing how we're relating to our bodies and nervous system. Uranus is the nervous system. This is the time to be exploring and discovering new modalities for health, sexuality, vitality that can be fundamentally liberating. Every single body is completely unique. Everyone must honor their God-born sensitivities, their natural rate and pace of doing things. Cow does not behave like cheetah. Cow is on the hill eating grass all day long. Some of us were made to be more of cows than workhorses. This is how we actually find success and we offer more back to the world and others without having to try when we honor the natural biological rhythm, the necessary rate and pace that honors our body and our nervous system. This is going to be also the discovery and the invention of somatic therapies that can transform how our consciousness is feeling, acting, and behaving. You know, we can go from running panic and stress is the jet fuel that motivates us to other forms of life sustenance <laughs> that are motivating us. I mean, that sounds funny, but this really is the necessary movement for, I'd say, most of us at this time. How can we run something other than fear, stress, and anxiety to pay the bills, to get what we need. What do we need to feel inspired? What do we need to feel charged? There is tremendous excitement. This is the time to let loose. Again, what's been on the back burner, try it out now. Even if you don't know where things are going, try it out now. If there's a new door you haven't gone through, go through that door. Maybe there's going to be a hallway with a whole other set of possibilities and doorways. This is the time. Don't leave anything that that spark is calling to you on the back burner. That's the phantom limb that's waking up and returning to your consciousness. It is an uncomfortable process at first. There's lots of pins and needles. We'd rather get away from that uncomfortable phantom limb that's coming back online. But once we have these extra limbs online, think of how much more we can do, how much more we're capable of. The extra and additional resources that we're now gathering from, the extra perspectives, wisdom, sensitivities, that's what we're talking about here. As always, it is a pleasure to get this information through. I'm really hoping on day three, this is actually being recorded. I've got multiple microphones, the technology, everything. I hope this one came through. Again, there's going to be a Q&A this coming weekend. I think it's the 24th, where you can bring in your birth chart, ask a question. Say you're going through a struggle right now. I'm going to look at your chart, your transits. This is what's going on and provide some suggestions in a five to ten minute mini reading. This monthly Q&A is included with my Astro School membership. A new lesson comes out every month. You're learning evolutionary astrology. Then you get to join the Q&A and ask a particular question about what you're learning or about your experience or about your chart. 
And again, at the end of this month, two free community meetings on the Pluto book by Jeffrey Green. Those who are into Jeffrey Green, you might want to join our monthly meeting. And then on the last day of the month, we'll have our Rasa Leela community meeting, which is a free support group. We're just honestly showing and telling. We're introducing ourselves. Hello, this is my face. This is what I'm doing. And we're also practicing requesting needs for support, putting into words what we're missing and what we need. That is, in many cases, what we all need to learn how to do, just to discover and communicate our missing needs. And this is a community that is to jumpstart, experiment, and build what we need so we can get all of our diverse needs met. This is again where astrology is a tool and a service into this much deeper and realer endeavor as a species. If you've made it to this last part of the video, congratulations. I've got a last mini announcement. I'm going to, for community members, and again, it's a free to join community, have a little tincture experiment. And I'm going to be sharing mimosa medicine. Yes, I've handpicked some mimosa for some delicious mimosa blossom tinctures. I'm probably not going to be able to keep up with the demand, so it's going to be a small batch and we're going to sell out. But for those of you who are into plants and plant medicine, you may want to check out mimosa. This is a puffy, fragrant, energizing, inspiring, optimistic. This is such amazing Leo medicine. So fun, so playful, beautiful, smells delicious, and looks like from the trees from Dr. Seuss books, The Lorax. Fluffity. Fluffity. So anyways, wishing you the best in July. Excited for what's to come in August. And I'll catch y'all in the next video. As always, do take care. Fluffity. Fluffity. One, two, three, four, five.